Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. Number six says the distance from Mark's house to Peter's house is 12 yards, 1 foot, and 17 inches. How far apart are the houses in inches? So there are a few bits that you need to know by heart here. You need to know the fact that 1 yard is equal to 3 feet. You need to know that one foot is equal to 12 inches, all right? Because we're gonna be moving down the chain here to get everything into inches. So first off, let's start with those 12 yards. Well, if t one yard is three feet, then we just need to multiply this 12 by three to get us to this foot. So 12 times three is gonna give me 36. So now we have 36 feet plus the one foot we still had for a total of 37 feet. Now we're going to be multiplying that by 12 because we have to move all of those into inches. So 37 times 12. Well, there's lots of different ways we can do this. The quickest I think is going to be 37 times 10 is going to give me 370. And then I still have two of them left. So if I double 37, that's going to end up giving me what? 60, 74, 74. So if we add 74 to this guy, that's going to end up giving us a total of... There's a four, another four, carry the one, 444. And then we still have that 17 inches left. So we just add 17 to this guy, giving us a final answer of 461, which is answer D. So number seven says, what is the perimeter in inches of a rectangular wall that measures six feet, four inches by eight feet, three inches? So the first thing to remember here is you have to do all the things. It's very easy to forget some of the steps here and get the wrong answer because of it. So first off, we're doing perimeter, meaning that when we get the length and width here, we're gonna need to multiply it by two to get the other side of it because you're adding up all four sides. Now, when we're doing this, um, it wants the answers in all inches. So let's go ahead and convert these feet to inches first. Uh, if you didn't know, there are 12 inches in a foot. So six times 12 is gonna give me 72. 72 plus that four though is gonna end up giving me 76 total inches for the one side. On the other side, we're going to have the eight times 12, which eight times 12 is 96. And then we gotta add that three more to give us 99. Now, when you're doing perimeter, again, you're going to end up adding up all four sides. We have a 99 over here and a 76 over here. Now, if you do just 99 plus 76, that's actually going to give you 175, which will be the wrong answer because you forgot the other two. So then go ahead and add those in, doubling this, and it's going to give you a final answer of 350. D. Number eight on the ESVAB says, what is the area in square inches of a square piece of carpet that measures six feet, two inches on a side? So now when you're doing conversions, you have to remember to like square these conversions as well. The other way you could deal with this is to just go ahead and convert all of your measurements first and then go ahead and do all of your mathematical work and you don't have to worry about this whole like squaring of conversions or anything. So in this case, we have a six foot two side length on a square. Now, I'm gonna just convert all the inches because we're dealing with square inches here. So remember there are 12 inches in a foot, so six times 12 is gonna give me 72, plus that two more is gonna give me a side length of 74. Now in this case, we're finding the area. An area of a square is a rectangle, so length times width, or in this case, it would just be 74 times 74, also known as 74 squared. Now remember, you don't get a calculator for this test, so a lot of times you wanna find quick ways to do this. If you can multiply 74 by 74 extremely quick in your head, great, do it. But what I would probably note right off the bat is that 70 squared just means I'm doing seven times seven to give me 49 with the two zeros after. And I already know there's only one answer bigger than that. So 74 squared is going to be bigger than this, meaning that there's only one possible answer here, and that would be D. Number nine is essentially a two-step, pretty basic problem here. It says 20 people each contribute $20 for a party. If 30% of that money is spent on food, how much money was spent on food? So the first things first is how much total money do we have here? Well, if 20 people are giving $20 a piece, we just multiply the two of those together, 
2 times 2 is going to give us 4, and then we have those two zeros that will end up coming down for a total of $400. Now, the next part of this question is knowing how to find 30% of a number. Now, the best way to always find the percent of a number is to do that number times the decimal form of that. With that said, on a test like Diazvad, there's usually quicker ways to do it. In this case, I would say 30% is a perfect multiple of 10, and finding 10% of something is really easy because you just move the decimal place over one. So 10% of 40, or sorry, 400, is going to be 40. So if I have $40 as 10%, and I know we need three of those because we're dealing with 30%, then I'm just going to take 40 times 3. And in that case, 40 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. That's going to give us a total of 120. Option B. Number 10 is also dealing with percents of a total, but let's look at the question in full. It says tickets for an amusement park cost $35 each. When bought over the phone, there is a 5% service charge. What is the total price for four tickets bought over the phone? So we're looking at a total price here. First thing we need to find out is how much do the tickets actually cost? So we're going to go ahead and do a 35 times four. Now there's lots of ways to do this. You could do it all by head. In my mind, I know that 25 times four is a easy 100. So I'm going to say, okay, that's 100. And then I have 10 more each time. So that's a total of 140. Now we have to go back and deal with this 5% rule. Again, you can always just multiply this by 0.05 to see how much that actually is, because that's the decimal form of 5%. But in this case, I know that 5% is half of 10%. And if you watched my last video, you saw 10% is always really easy, because you just move the decimal place one time to the left. So 10% of 140 is 14. So 5% of 140 would be half of 14, which would be 7. So in this case, a 5% service charge added to the original 140 would be 140 plus 7, giving us a total of $147, which is answer D. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.